Hello everyone, I'm Chester again from Hong Kong Cigars and Whiskey and uh, today we're going to be talking about the Douglas Lane Limited Edition Big Pete. Uh, it is a uh, Isla blend of malt whiskey. Uh, it has a very interesting selection uh, in terms of its blend. It has uh, Ardbeg, Coila, Bowmore, and Port Ellen. So for those of you who are into the whiskies, uh, maybe even the rarer sorts of whiskies, Port Ellen is a name you definitely would know. So this is the Hong Kong edition. Uh, in addition to the Hong Kong edition, Big Pete actually does have um, a regional malts edition. Uh, it has a regional malts pack uh, and also the Big Pete uh, regional malts Christmas edition. Now I've not had the Christmas edition. The Christmas edition is about 53.1% uh, alcohol as is the Hong Kong uh, edition of the Big Pete. Um, the other regular uh, uh, regional malts edition is only 46%. So, <clears throat> as you can tell, um, another limited edition that we're doing here, um, although this is not a limited uh, production, it's a limited edition, um, you can tell by the way that it has, it features the Bruce Lee nunchucks, and that represents the uh, Hong Kong, whereas on the regular uh, edition, the regional malt edition, you'll see him in a yellow turtleneck, and that's the main difference. So we go to have a look at the bottle. Another very beautifully crafted bottle. You'll see my favorite um, way of doing bottles is to actually have a writing on the bottle, which you can see here. And what we have is a very clear yellow. You can see that right now. It's a very clear yellow. You can actually see my uh, kitchen appliances behind me. It is so clear. So it's not from a sherry cask at all. It's a small batch, limited edition, cask strength, right? It's the way I like it. Um, so uh, it is definitely not something that's for everyone. Big Pete, as uh, some of my friends have put it, when they uh, open up a bottle, uh, people can actually smell it. So for those of you who don't know what Pete is, um, people always say, oh, look, it's big peat, big peat, yeah, it's very peaty, it's very this, it's very that. Well, in the process of making whiskey, uh, the obviously the, the reason why every distillery uh, and every brand is a little different, and that's why guys like Johnny Walker, who has distilleries in several different places in, um, in Scotland, when they blend their whiskies, um, you get a very distinct flavor. Um, especially when you have the more limited production or limited make uh, Johnny Walker Blue Label editions that include some of their rarer distilleries that have closed, it is because distilleries tend to make um, their whiskies from number one the malts that they have in that region. So, you know, even in the same country, different places within the country has different weather, uh, has different uh, malts that are native to that region. Um, uh, and so number one, it's the malts. Number two, it's the water. And number three, uh, it's the peat. And what is peat? Peat is basically a decayed vegetation, um, which has been compressed for many, many years. Um, and when back in the day, um, when you made whiskey, you could either um, use wood and just burn wood um, or burn bits and pieces of things to dry out your malts. When you dry out your malts, um, the, the flavor, the smoke, from what you burn passes on to the malts. And that's why when you have peat, which is that vegetation, that very dense, compacted, decayed vegetation, um, that peat is the flavor that goes into the malts, what well, contributes to the flavor goes to the malts. The malts actually then produce the alcohol content during the fermentation process, uh, and then the color of the whiskey is taken from the barrels. So you can call that the three components of whiskey, okay? Uh, now, Big Pete, obviously uh, very peaty, 
uh, why is it peaty? Well, um, in the process of making uh, or drying out the malt, you can actually have the malt uh, dry uh, so that so for the peat to burn for a little longer uh, or to be left um, in, a, in the kiln after heat. So some of the residual heat is still around, but it's not actively being dried, but you can leave it in there um, to continue to absorb the smoke. So the malts will then take on the characteristics that you make it based on how long you leave it in uh, the kiln for and how long you actually have a fire under the kiln for. Uh, and this all goes towards uh, how the taste uh, evolves in the whiskey. Again, Big Pete, let's give it a try. Okay. Mm. Uh, certainly is very peaty. I definitely wouldn't recommend anyone just cover up the entire glass and sniff it because it is very, very peaty. Um, at 53.1% alcohol, it's not the strongest whiskey that's out there, but it's, you know, it's quite, you know, alcoholic. Uh, a lot of the whiskeys you see will be in the high 40s. Um, so this is actually going to be very tough on your eyes if you just stick your nose in there and, and sniff it all at the same time. Um, let's see. Definitely very peaty. Mm. Um, it's excellent. Um, the way that I would recommend that you uh, drink it is definitely to chew it uh, for as long as you like, but for a minimum of five seconds. Anything that you drink neat, um, even if it's whiskey that is uh, that is aged, vintage, let's just say a 20, 21 year, 18 year, 21 year, 25 or 30 year, I would still chew it before I drink it. It just brings uh, the whiskey around your tongue, it envelops your tongue, um, any spiciness sort of gets taken out, um, it brings the whiskey to temperature, so um, when the whiskey is at temperature um, of your body, I think it brings out more of the flavors. So the longer you chew it, the more it swirls around your mouth, the, the more that it is acclimatized to your own mouth, to your body temperature. And once you drink it, uh, swallow it, and then take a deep breath, and all the goodness, all the aromas in that whiskey will come out. It's a different way of drinking. A lot of people will just knock back or add ice. Um, I definitely don't add ice to any of my whiskeys. It's not a tough guy thing to do, uh, to drink it neat. Uh, it's just that ice deadens a lot of the aromas and the tastes and you don't get uh, the full flavors that come out of whiskey. So without uh, further ado, um, this is a non-chill filtered uh, car strength uh, whiskey, 53.1% alcohol. Uh, the tasting notes do include sea breeze, lemon zest, white blossom, and a gentle and long-lasting peat aftertaste. Uh, definitely has the sea breeze and the lemon zest. Uh, not so sure about the white blossom. Very, very long aftertaste uh, in terms of the peat. Um, I think for the price that it comes at, which is just over $100 US, or if you buy it from Hong Kong, I would recommend, and I am not sponsored, so make it clear, I'm not sponsored. Um, if uh, you purchase this at the uh, whiskey library, uh, this is actually bottled for whiskey library. So uh, it is exclusive to them. The whiskey library, which is a whiskey shop in Hong Kong that imports a lot of the uh, uh, Douglas Lane uh, 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 expressions throughout the entire range of whiskies. Um, they actually had this bottle for them. So they are 
the cheapest in town so far that I've seen. Uh, do not pay over 835 Hong Kong dollars for it if you're buying it locally, okay? Um, which is what I made them do, so I never buy it from anywhere else. Okay, you you would think that okay from a from a big shop like Whiskey Library it would be expensive. Well, they are the cheapest. They happen to be cheapest for this whiskey, and that's why I will always go back there for a bottle. Now, <clears throat> the first impression is definitely sweet. It is very peaty and very aromatic. Um, I think it's, uh, I, I would say this is not for everybody because it is quite peaty. Um, it takes somebody who really does like Isla, um, really does like peat, stronger flavors, um, and people who probably are a little more seasoned, they would appreciate this a lot more. Uh, definitely not an expensive drink by any measure if you stack it up, uh, stack it up against the other uh, Isla whiskies, um, for example, the Corey Vreckens uh, from Ardbeg. Um, yeah, so the, the, the Ardbeg varieties, the Corey Vreckens, the Anal, uh, and the uh, Uvedal. Um, I think they're all around roughly the same price range. Um, so, you know, would I prefer one over another or even a Coila? Um, this is, I will probably have this after dinner. So once you're uh, you know, had a bit of food, all different sorts of flavors. Um, you you still want uh, a whiskey that you can taste properly. This is definitely a whiskey you can taste properly after your meals. Um, so, I've also been able to match this with cigars. Uh, it is surprisingly, um, given the strong flavors, it is not too overpowering versus tobacco smoke. Um, uh, some of the fresh rolls I've had, uh, the uh, the Magnum 50s that I've had as well, um, definitely not something that uh, that would uh, nudge the other one out. It's quite complimentary, so I definitely would recommend trying this particular whiskey with uh, cigars. Um, speaking of which, though, when you have cigars, uh, a lot of people think, oh, you know, ports and whiskey and wines and things like that go with cigar. Yes, they can, but it's very hard actually to, to find them. It's actually very hard to find one that pairs really well with uh, a whiskey, uh, sorry, a, a cigar. So um, a few few of the things that I've, that I've had in the past that paired really well. Uh, number one is definitely a good whiskey, but that takes time to find. Um, and finding a good wine is even harder. Uh, the second thing is tea. Uh, jasmine tea will surprise you. Um, if you smoke a cigar with a jasmine tea, it definitely complements the smoke. So uh, next time you, you decide to have a cigar after a meal or if just you know, chilling out in the afternoon like I am in Hong Kong, uh, you know, for sure, you know, go through the varieties, uh, see what it is. You know, this big peak whiskey here, definitely a good match for cigars. Uh, but if you're looking at a non-alcoholic drink, um, a jasmine tea will be fantastic as well. Uh, anyway, this will be a, a shorter one. Uh, and uh, the next time, I think we might be going through some, uh, some cigar places in Hong Kong. Uh, and uh, let's see how that compares to the cigar places where you are living. Um, you know, whether that be in Asia or the Americas and Europe. Uh, you know, please do leave comments. Uh, and uh, please help us uh, to grow by clicking like and subscribe. Thank you very much and cheers again to you all.